Hello everyone. Today's talk is called, sorry I'm laughing, trying to be spiritual or trying to be spiritually enlightened by leaving your family behind. Sorry for giggling, but just, you know, people have told me, but the lampshade is sitting on top of my head. So just, I just have a giggle to myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, trying to be spiritual by being joyful. Well, how do you become a spiritual uh, but I really mean leaving your parents behind. Now, I have huge numbers of examples of this. I had a client actually recently, when I say recently, about two weeks ago, um, this person was about 10 years older than me, and I'm 59, or maybe, maybe not, no, no, not so much, more like five years older than me. And they, so anyway, well, they talked about their parents. So this is a real this is, I suppose, and what they call an inconvenient truth about spirituality. And I peeves, I won't say piss someone off as bad English, but excuse me. But I, I peeve off a lot of people by asking this question. And I ask this question quite early, but it can be an offensive question. So warn, trigger warning, trigger, <laughs> trigger warning. Yeah, you will get triggered. OK, so. If someone says to me, oh, well, I want to become spiritual, or I'm a beginner, or I've had these recent experiences, and I'm seeing number sequences, or I'm having contact with angels, um, and everything looks fluffy and nice, um, I'm always aware of what they call spiritual bypassing. And so I always ask them a question, you know, so they might even talk to me about, you know, channeling Archangel Michael, and this, that, and the other. And I said, well, how's your family? And we go, what? I say, how's your family? And so this is this is actually one of the most inconvenient truths about spirituality, and particularly very much spiritual enlightenment. So I say, how's your family? I say, oh, oh well, you there, okay? And I said, well, how's your mum? I said, um, I don't know. I haven't spoken to my mum in thirty years. I said, oh, okay. Well, how's your dad? Oh, my dad died, you know, when I was sixteen. Or my dad lives on the other, he lives like five states away. He lives in Arizona and I live in New York. And, you know, we speak about once a year on birthdays, maybe. So this is the real bleep, bleep, bleep trigger warning about spirituality and spiritual enlightenment. <sighs> I sigh. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a problem, right? So how do you become spiritually enlightened? How do you step out of the three-dimensional matrix mind? And how do you, you know, push away all those naughty narcissists? And how do you become spiritual? <laughs> Excuse me for being silly. But it's a huge problem. So this is an inconvenient truth about spirituality and spiritual enlightenment and spiritual bypassing. My dad always hates it when I do this. He doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, we have a joke about that. Okay. So, there was a really, really good movie that I went to see called The 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 um, Lady in the Snow Cave or something like that. Anyway, long story short, from the East End of London, if you know about London and the East East Enders, the Cockneys, do what John got new motor. No, I mean, Harry. <laughs> Sorry. If you're in America, you won't know what that means. No, I mean, Harry. Um, well, the the Cockneys are kind of really down to earth, salt, salt of the earth. Um, and <clears throat> salt of the earth means um, he's, as, he's as good as his salt or is worth his salt. And salt was considered, you know, good quality. But anyway, back to, um, back to basics. Discipline, Edward, discipline. So, sorry, I'm in a really silly mood. In the silly mood. Okay, so anyway, she was an East Ender, right? She was a Cockney, a woman, and she said, "I can't be, I can't be doing with all this argy bargy. Do what, John? <laughs> you know, I'm out of here. You know, Snugglepuss exit stage right." She didn't like all the arguments in her East End London, you know, council tenement block, you know, family. So she became a Tibetan Buddhist, and she became a nun, and specifically, she went up into she she spoke to the Tibetan Buddhist Lamas and said, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, do do it right. I don't want to just go Nambyo Haringa Kyo Namahyo Haringa Kyo back home. I want to do it. I want to do it hardcore. So the Tibetan Lama says, well, you know, there's a there's a cave up there at the foothills of the Himalayas, and you'll be in bliss and you know enlightened. And so she did this for about five or six years. 
and she had a little wood stove and there was a there was a snow leopard you know clawing at her door you know wanting wanting fresh meat so she was very very disciplined hardcore but i think her father died uh in during her snow cave endeavor and she just thought nothing of it and just carried on you know nam and then when she came down from the mountain like six years later and she found out that her spiritual enlightenment buddhist you know tibetan lama had died also and then she was in a whale of tears now why am i telling you this story it's because you can you can try be a real try hard and you can do spiritual bypass bypassing and you can be enlightened and you can do as much as you want but if you try and leave your family behind or specifically your mum and dad you'll either be in denial or you'll you might be partially spiritually enlightened but it's actually not real spiritual enlightenment and because the definition of spiritual and the definition of spiritual enlightenment has to involve beauty love truth oneness and joy and in this regard oneness is is the ultimate uh when you achieve you know unity consciousness so if you have a see in school in mathematics we had sets and subsets and it was new maths and you had these circles and then you had another circle over here and then some some of those things crossed over so if you think about spiritual enlightenment means me means god it means all my nice fr buddies and friends but i've got another circle over here of nasty naughty reptilians and i'm um, and narcissists and i'm gonna include my naughty you know father who you know raped me when i was five years old and my mother and i'm gonna put them as a subset over here and these two circles are separate and never the twain shall meet they don't even cross over right they're totally separate well if you're doing that that's not really fully spiritual enlightenment and someone said to me as a jibe the other day, they said jokingly, Edward, you know, uh, do you mean that you can have unity consciousness with reptilians? And I thought, what are you digging at? What do you mean? And they were just sort of jibing and joking with me. And well, you can't have unity consciousness rep with reptilians because reptilians, um, they have no love. They they lived in caves 15 billion years ago and they did damage to their to their the portion of the brain that processes love. And when psychologists put an associate a psychopath in a PET scan they find that the area of the brain that has empathy it doesn't light up it's it's dead so can you achieve unity consciousness with everybody well in a nice ideal world be nice to yeah 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 but not with reptilians and not with your father who was a reptilian or a narcissist and sexually abused you when you were five years old and then you start having to have this subset of these people over here that you will never be in unity consciousness with and never darken my door again you know like the woman who went up into the snow cave she probably i don't know i i won't say too much you know for personal reasons in case she tries to take me to court and sue her for slamming her spiritual enlightenment which i which i'm i, I much very much doubt but if she had a narcissistic or a reptilian in her family maybe she was running away and doing temporary spiritual bypassing or spiritual denial so this is a real doozy this is the inconvenient truth about spiritual enlightenment is that now it is true that when i had my spiritual enlightenment 20 26 odd years ago and i was in nerva kalpa samadhi i loved everybody and everything uh, i wasn't focusing specifically on naughty people um, but I just had this universal love. I also did get attacked. Um, when I came down from that, I also got abducted, alien abduction, and an implant up my nose by, by reptilians. So I, I wasn't in unity consciousness then. So it's a bit of a doozy. So, but in general, if you're trying to be spiritual, not everybody's going to have Nerva Kalpa Samadhi or Kundalini or whatever, but just back to basics, basic, basic, basics. If you want to be spiritual by any by any measure, you um, are going to just delay your soul development or your soul growth. Even if you're not trying to be spiritual, and and you and you don't like your family and you travel to the other side of the world, I used to have arguments with my dad. And so, at the age of 24, I went from New Zealand, and I was born in England, but I went from New Zealand, where I did my childhood, and I lived in London, and sure i wanted the excitement of london i learned lots of things but part of it was just to get away from my controlling father uh, i'll talk more about my father later on 
So many of us make strong delays in our soul development by ignoring and pushing away our parents. We just we just do. And everybody will do that. And there's no judgment upon you for doing that. If you do that, I understand. You know, there's no one up there in the universe, angels or anybody, who's waving a finger at you. And sometimes it's necessary. If you've got a narcissist, sometimes it's necessary to have months or years completely away from away from them. I, I had this book about how to deal with a narcissist by Dr. Someone, Bruno Someone. And it says with narcissists, you have just have to limit contact. In order to set healthy boundaries for yourself, you've got to limit contact and speak to them. And... Well, I won't talk about my dad because that gets complicated because he travelled up north and I could only see him, f you know, four or five times a year because he was two and a half hour drive away. But for a period, it's quite healthy and normal to have some healthy boundaries from your your parents. It, and also and also to become independent. It's hugely important when you become a teenager in your 20s. Sometimes it's good to just leave the nest and travel the world and do a overseas, you know, you know, anyway. So, but you can delay your soul growth. As I was talking about that client, this client, I won't even give any details, whatever, because of client confidentiality. But this person, I just asked them that inconvenient truth question, and I become very unpopular. So people can ring me up and say, Edward, we would like some advice about, you know, contacting angels, or we would like some advice about how to achieve Kundalini, or I'd like some advice about um, you know, becoming a healer, and then I, and then after a couple of questions, and they they just download on me. I say, "How's your family? Uh, how's your mum and dad? Uh, when did you speak to your mum? When when was the last time you spoke to your dad?" Now it may sound really really horrible, like I'm like I'm not digging at them, but you can't become spiritual, and you can't have these this set of happy 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 people and some people do that they actually physically leave their family and they travel to the other side of the world or they go to india and they go to pune and they go to you know um bhagwan rajneesh um, osho you know resort um or sai baba and they they're done with their fam with their narcissistic nasty family and i'm going to be spiritual and i'm going to live in a retreat and i'm going to avoid all of my uncomfortable feelings and I'm just done. I, I'm I'm so over it. I'm over it, Edward. I'm over it. <laughs> so so that's what people do. But you will actually delay your soul growth and you can sure you can live in a in a spiritual commune. You can be in bliss and sort of enlightened, but when you come back home, nothing's really changed, you know. Um, your relationship with them hasn't shifted, it hasn't moved on. The same resentment and the same hurts are still there. Now, some things can change with time, and I'll talk talk to you about that later. So um, then you might have to do some emotional healing. So it is true that at certain times in your life, you just can't handle it. And, and I find that with most of my clients, they have to reach their 50s before they have the intellectual and emotional and maturity to be able to handle and start the healing process. Um, and when you're in your 20s and your 30s, you, you don't want to have anything to do with your parents. You want to be famous and you want to, you know, become a millionaire or, you know, become a Bitcoin, you know, investor. And you, you, you have no interest in family or love or, you know, fluffy ducks. So what are the solutions? Well, I'll deal with some of the separate, the separate groups. Um, you've got uh, baby souls and they're just obsessed with security uh like my dad my dad would be classified as a but yeah my dad's a baby soul um baby souls um and what you must understand when you've got a parent that's a baby soul and they're nagging you and you're saying go and get a job and um and you're lazy and um you know get a proper job and um and, you know, I, you know I, I, I tell my friends I, I I don't know what they're doing these days and I worry about you and blah, blah, blah. So all of that language, there's a book called The Five Love Languages and I won't go into that either because it takes too long. But basically, quite often when you've got a baby soul as a parent, a lot of the language comes out wrong. But sometimes when they worry about you, it's not having a dig. It's not like trying to lower 
and etch away at your self-worth and your self-esteem, they're just gen generally worried and they're scared and they put security and job high on the gender. Now, I didn't put security and job high on the agenda. I wanted to be a famous ballet star and I wanted to travel to London and educate myself and then become spiritual. And so my criteria were radically different from my father. My father was worried about security and money. I've even had a relationship with a girlfriend recently where she worries a lot about security and money because she comes from a culture where security is very important. And I won't talk about that because it's personal and it's off topic. So some people, particularly baby souls, really, really worry about security. So if, you have a, uh, if you're a star starseed or a highly evolved soul and you've got a, a baby soul as a parent, when they worry about you and when they criticize you, they're not actively you know, trying to attempt to injure you. Sometimes they can be a little bit jealous or a little bit insecure or, or, or there might be a little bit of that, but generally they're just worried. And so that language just comes out the wrong way. And they don't, they don't even they don't even have self awareness. They don't mean to be unkind. Um, they're just they're just worried. So if you have a narcissist parent as well, uh, who's controlling, um, often they feel sad and they they have feelings of regret after they've said their words and it just came out wrong. They didn't want to be hurtful. So if you're in spiritual denial about your parents, um, try and get to the nitty-gritty of this inconvenient truth and try and find out what they're really feeling. Now, I do this quite a lot. I've got what I call the book technique, and Mother Mary will just say, you know, third group of books, um, you know, read the bottom of page 73 in that particular book. And then I'll just ask questions like, you know, why is my dad, you know, stressed right now? Or my, why does my dad feel this way? Or what happened when he grew up because he didn't have a father that makes him like this? So I, I want to get to the nitty-gritty of why a person is behaving the way they are and quite often uh, they don't really feel the way they express sometimes just words come out wrong so here's another thing that's hugely important so am I getting off topic I've got to try and remember what it was oh no it's about relates to another topic so I won't go there but so quite often the communication just goes really really bad and then you start wounding each other and they're defending their position and at one point in time, my father used to always say, uh, he, used to, he used to like me to be proud of him. I used to tell kids at school that my dad was a woodcarver and he was strong. And, and, and he, my dad asked me, do you still tell you know your friends that I'm a woodcarver and you're proud of me? And he, he wanted to be reminded that I was still proud of him. So sometimes parents, um, and, my, and also my dad used to call me elitist because when I got an education, I sounded sort of philosophical and, and I used to try and help him um, and so, and I think he got sad because he missed the old days when I was just um, simple and we were in the workshop and on the farm. So I think he was grieving a loss of an old me that was no longer here. When I was a child, I was dressed up as an American Indian shooting bows and arrows. I was in the workshop and we were running, chasing possums and sleeping in a, in a, in a pup tent, you know, with freshwater crayfish. And then I went to London and I became a banker and I educated myself in psychology and philosophy. And I, I came home again and my dad sort of thought, well, what happened? Where's, where's the cute little kid that you were having fun shooting bows and arrows? And now you're intellectual and you're superior and you're elitist. So my dad felt very sad. So he was grieving the loss of the old me. So if you become spiritual and start... Um, quoting and pontificating and you start um, you start uh, sounding intelligent your parents actually might be sad because they're grieving the loss of um, of the old you that's sort of not present anymore so that's really important to become aware of that sometimes they're just grieving a loss of an old identity that wasn't that's not there anymore now, if your um, parent is obviously, if, you're, if you've got a parent that's a reptilian, that's a lot harder because, uh, as I said, to do with those brain scanning techniques, the empathy and the love in the brain is just not present. So if you're expecting, and every childhood, you know, inner child inside you wants our parents to say, I'm proud of you, I, I love you, but you're never going to get that from a reptilian. Now, I only know of two people that have got both parents that are reptilians. Um, 
I saw this really, really funny Australian piece of comedy the other day, and I really love it, and I share it with my friends. And there's the three guys, I think they're in Queensland in Australia, and they just do this joke, and they kind of do this bro handshake. And when they do this bro handshake, that sort of magic happened, and everything went right, you know, and then... And he even got a text from his dad and says, "I, I." And he, his dad said to him, "He said, um, I don't have any regrets, and I'm still proud of you." And it was like magic. It was like the the best words that a son could ever get from their parents or from their father. So we always we always want that, and we wish that, and sometimes we're holding on for that. So um, now. When I mentioned about if you've got parents that are reptilians, you say, well, Edward, I can't heal my relationship with my father because I think they're a reptilian and my mother's, um, you know, just um, a sad, you know, human baby soul that's been, un you know, under control of my father, you know, whole life or it could be the other way around. And so how can't heal them? So sometimes if you want to um, get love, and nurturing sometimes you might not get it from your father you might have to you, and if you've got two reptilian parents sometimes you have to go to another family member like a grandparent or an auntie so God's not so harsh to give you two reptilian parents so you get no loving support quite often you get a really wonderful um, grandparent and then you say well Edward I can't heal my relationship with my grandparent because they're dead so what do I do okay so here's the next stage of the solution well this is what I did with my father as well. Sometimes you can't, you absolutely cannot heal your, well, Mother Mary is coming into my ear and saying that's not entirely true, Edward, don't say that. But sometimes it feels like you can't heal your relationship with your parents and they will never change because that's not true and I'll tell you more about that later. But the best way to start is to work on the astral. Now what do I mean by, you know, work on the astral? So if you've got very, very difficult parents, you know, bleep, 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 um, can't go there, can't talk to them, they're so rigid, they're narrow-minded, there's no hope in hell, hell's going to have to freeze over before they're going to change and tell me that they're proud of me or that they love me. That's just never going to happen. It's not entirely true. So in that case, what do you do? You meditate and you do self-hypnosis and you have conversations with them. Now, if I have a client who wants hypnosis with me, um, I take them down a flight of stairs and I make them travel inside their body and bring up a very old memory of an early trauma when they're two or three or four years old. Uh, one woman, um, her mother, told her to put her hand on the hot plate on the stove and she got burned and then she never trusted her mother ever again and she said, why did she do that? She just wanted to teach her uh, that stoves are hot, which is really stupid. And so she cut off in her psyche her connection with her mother from the age of three and never visited the feeling of love from her mother ever again after that never trusted her so what you can do in hypnosis i have a well i won't go into it too much but you can have a conversation with your dead mother or or your mother who's alive in the astral you can have a conversation with her inner child you can bring your grandmother in to heal your mother and you can get um, your mother to have a conversation with her own inner child and then her inner child to get nurturing from her grandmother or her grandfather so you can get it at multiple levels at multiple angles so if you feel that you are still spiritual bypassing and you pushed your parents away and they live in two states away in Nevada and you live in New York and they're a narcissist they're never going to tell you that they love you they're never going to tell you that they're proud of you because they've got too much pride uh, a lot of parents have got a lot of pride and they just won't they won't say these words first you have to be the one that and you say well why should i do that i was raped i was abused i was slapped around and i have to be the one that fronts up and i'm the strong one and i have to apologize and you scratch your head and you go oh, i don't want to go there don't want to go there you know I don't darken my door again don't want to talk to them go away done dusted well you can do that um, spiritual bypassing, denial, whatever, and you're never going to be spiritually enlightened. It's just never going to happen. Um, and I have a lot of clients that that are in this situation, and I ask the hard questions. I say, how's your family? How's your mum and dad? When was the last time you spoke to your father? When was the last time you spoke to your mum? I said, oh, she's got schizophrenic schizophrenia. She's in a psychiatric hospital. I visit her once a year if she's lucky, but I don't want to see her again. Don't talk to me about that, Edward. Uh, I didn't come on the phone to you to talk to you about my mum. 
I came to talk to you about healing and talking to angels and becoming enlightened. Don't ask me to talk to me about my dad. He's, you know, dead. We don't, we don't talk to him. So it is true. Um, so, uh, I won't go into there because it'll just go on too long. But I think you know what I mean. Now, um, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my time with my father because my situation with my father is really interesting. It just as a case in point, it's fascinating. Now, uh, my dad, about 10 years ago, looked like this. Um, if you, I don't know if you can, if anybody can psychically tune into the energy. Um, he doesn't look very happy, does he? You can probably see similarities between me and him. Probably similarities. But it, it's not a happy face. And I never show anybody this photograph, ever. If they come to my house or on camera, I never show. And he, if you look at his face, he just looks sad. But if I psychically tune in, yeah, he looks sad. He looks um, defeated. And he also looks a little bit resentful as well. So... Um, that was my father 10 years ago. And my my father, he, 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 I won't say exactly what he did, but he traveled. He traveled two and a half hours north. And I said, Dad, what, why do you want to leave here? It's lovely and you'll be away from me. And he said, well, I just want a quiet, easy life. And he had three wives. Um, they were real hard work. I won't go on into uh, how complicated that was. But I think he just got tired of living. And he traveled two and a half, half hours north. And I said, I want a quiet and easy life, Ted. Like, I just, I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm going to retire. And I want a quiet, easy life. I want a quiet, easy life. So that's what he did. And he was up there for about four or five years. And then he started to say, I'm bored and I'm lonely. <laughs> I'm bored and I'm lonely. So how did he go from being stressed out and wanting a tired, uh, you know, a, a free and easy life? And then to be bored and lonely, well, he just shifted and he started to change. So he had to get um, completely alone and bored um, and lonely to start to have feelings of gratitude. And he, he changed. He fell over and he hurt his leg really, really badly. Uh, there was a, I don't know what the reason for it, but he had a, like, a collapse, his, his, his knee. Anyway, long story short... I psychically tuned in that something was wrong and I rang him. I couldn't find him. I spoke to the neighbor and the neighbor just says, oh, he had a fall. And so I just intuitively, I used my psychic ability and I knew he was in the hospital. So I just got in the car and drove up like five o'clock that evening uh, immediately, two hours north. And I just, I rang the hospital and said, you know, Edward James Tag, what ward is he in? And they said, he's ward, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, accident, emergency. And I turned up and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I heard you, you had a fall. He said, well, I didn't tell you I was in the hospital. And I said, well, I just felt it. I just came to the hospital. So anyway, and I, and I held his hand. He was in he was in bed, oh, in the hospital bed. And he said, why are you holding my hand? And he said, oh, because I'm, I'm just giving you some good energy. Oh, I don't need to hold your hand. You don't need to hold my hand. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. And he was pushing me away, pushing me away. I thought, okay, if you want, that's the way you want it, whatever. So I was just showing him love, you know, and I done I did all this um, hip self hypnosis and all this astral work, and then so I I was shifting, and I no longer had any more resentment. So I have no resentment towards my dad now. So it's really really weird when you do your work, when you do your self hypnosis, when you do your crying, when you purge and release everything. It affects them. And you think, well, that's impossible. I haven't spoken to them in 20 or 30 years. Well, they shift. They shift in the astral. When your soul is up there in the astral and when you go to sleep and his soul is in the astral, they're interacting, even if you don't know it. So if you shift uh, and you've only done it in the astral, they start changing. Uh, and and then when you physically go to meet them, your face looks different, your countenance. So that's my father's um, countenance. That's his, his face. And you can read the psychic energy. You can read the state that he's in. But he doesn't look like that now. He's 88? 88. Yeah, he's 88. 88, 88 and a half. His countenance is radically different to that now. He's just got beauty and calm. He just looks. He looks like a saint. And I thought, now here's the funny thing. I'm not allowed to tell you this because the angels say never, 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 never say this about life and death. But I knew something about eight years ago and he made a change. And I'm not even going to tell you because I'm just not allowed to. It's just like it's one of the big, big no-nos about psychic and angels and information. So I'm not allowed to tell you. So anyway, he changed something 
And anyway, consequently, my dad is still alive. And I was surprised. I won't say why. I won't say why. Um, but now it's like my dad's gone and and a, and a beautiful, um, calm um, saint has sort of stepped in. He just changed. Now, the other thing about people as they as they get elderly is that they get tired of being angry. They actually get tired of it. So, And all the hormones that generate strength and anger and fighting and bitterness, all those hormones, they shift. And also the tiredness around it shifts. So don't be surprised sometimes. Well, it's, happened, it's been... There was a time about 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, we both got in the car together and I went to put my... Um, seat belt on as and I put my hand to put the seat belt on he did exactly the same thing at the same time and he felt my elbow and he looked at me you know gave me this he turned around he looked at me with this really evil stare like he was really wounded like how dare you compete with me you know it was he was just really dark I thought it was like he had an entity in him and so 20 years ago that's he was like that all the time but he's, he's radic radically different. It's almost like my dad has become the saint. And, and a few days ago, because he's, now he's moved back to Auckland. He's, he's living here. He, he moves into a new house on this Sunday. Um, I went to, to, the, to the doctors with him because he was just registering with a new doctor. And I put my arm around his elbow and helped him down a slippery slope. I don't know why he chose to walk on the slippery, dangerous part, but he did. And so I held his hand and... Um, I just supported him to the doctors and, and we got on really, really well. It was almost like I had my arm around um, a beautiful, saintly person. And so old age has actually been like a miracle to my father. So all, the reason I'm telling you this story is with regards to this inconvenient truth, if you have a parent that you hate or you resent, you haven't spoken to them for 30 years and they're never, 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 never come hell or water, you know, hell has to freeze over, they're never going to change. It's actually not entirely true. So that's one of the inconvenient truths. If you speak to me and you talk to me about angels or spiritual enlightenment, you say, I want to be enlightened. I'm going to say, how's your family? How's your mum? How's your dad? So um, family can be real buggers, can't they? <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. Yeah, they can be. They can be difficult. But what I must tell you is that, I hope I don't start crying, but... Um, when Dad and I was really small, um, just blissfully, 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 blissfully happy. And even, you know my story that I was beaten and tortured and abused in a foster home for, for six years. And that was from Monday to Friday. But in the weekends, I went to stay with my dad. Now, I kept it a secret. I had lots of PTSD symptoms. I used to fire, fire arrows in the sky and wait for them to fall down so they could hit me. And I wouldn't, I would never run. But... I had happy moments. There were some moments once my dad lifted me up with both hands over my head like Superman, you know. So my dad was my hero. So all I'm trying to tell you is that, sure, relationships between you and your parents can go badly, badly, badly wrong. And there's lots of lots of evil things that happen in the world. But um, if you want to be spiritually enlightened and encompass all of all, everybody in the world... You can't spiritual bypass and you can't live in denial with regards to your parents because even if they're, you know, pee addicts and prostitutes and reptilians or whatever, um, and it's difficult with reptilians, of course, but um, even if that bad stuff happened, even when you were born, there would have been smiles and tickles and giggles and lovely, happy stuff as there was in my life. So um, that's that. Trying to be spiritual by leaving your family behind, it's just not really possible. It's semi-possible, but life changes. And I just like to inspire people to think again when you say um, you don't have anything to do with your parents because there, there were memories. Sometimes when I'd give psychic readings for people and they have this problem, I'll say, your dead father's coming through and he's showing me, you know, you've got this white Shirley Temple dress on and he's chasing you around the garden um, and tickling you and you're having a bundle of laughs. And you say, well, that never happened. My father was never like that. And then I say, were you sure? And didn't you have like a, a plastic red swing in the back garden and your dad used to put the lawnmower in the shed and you had this and you've got the path and you've got the hyacinths growing on the left and the daffodils on the right? And so, 
Yeah, how do you know that? That's true. That was that I was too offensive. Oh yeah, my dad did um did tickle me that day and you know run around and push me on the swing. Yeah, I do remember that. I've forgotten that. And so everybody will have beautiful happy memories. Well, hopefully they do. So that's it. Um, talk done. Um, I've had a problem lately. Maybe someone can educate me, but I've been posting to other groups and I got temporarily put in Facebook jail. I think it's because they didn't like the links because I'm uploading them into YouTube. And I don't think other groups like you putting a YouTube link on their page. So I, I went into jail for a few hours and sometimes I post in, you know, too much in other groups. But um, I need to learn that. Okay, have a lovely day. If you want to be spiritually enlightened, please try and love your parents. Um, you know, they grew up in World War One. or I've got other other friends that had parents, they had farms, and, and, you know, life was hard. I mean, sure, it's hard for you, and I understand that. But just um, just rethink it. If you think you're, you're superior and you understand everything and you understand it all, maybe you don't. Lots of love, love and kisses to everybody, and bye for now.